most of this work which I'm going to present, which are the initial results from a, a phase one, two study looking at uh, MRI-guided targeted focal therapy, I guess I'm supposed to call it. Uh, most of the work was done by Bafara Day, who those in the uh, focal world know quite well. Um, Bafara has really taken the lead at Memorial in terms of uh, targeted therapy. Most of the presentations we've seen so far have really talked about hemiablation of the prostate. And really, uh, from the standpoint of focal therapy, um, I think the, the goal is to try to treat as little as possible. And um, what we have difficulty with is, is defining the target. We've talked about that several times during this meeting in terms of the limitations of all of the uh, ways in which we can assess um, cancer volume, identifying the, uh, the most threatening cancer to the patient. Um, MRI certainly has limitations. This study was based on MRI, so it certainly uh, can be critiqued. But ultimately, um, we need to find better ways to identify the area of the prostate that we're going to destroy. Whatever technology we use, and we'll hear about seed implant radiation therapy, we know about cryotherapy, HIFU, laser, electroporation, photodynamic therapy. I'm sure there's some other things I'm missing. But we can kill prostate tissue. That's pretty simple to do. Um, what we haven't figured out is the area to kill. Um, so this was one attempt at that. Um, it was based on MRI, so the gentleman had to have a, an MRI target, and typically they underwent two separate biopsy sessions, systematic and targeted biopsy. It was not a mapping biopsy by any means. And we know the limitations of MRI. It's based on lesion size, and it's also based on Gleason score. Bigger lesions you typically can see better. Those with a higher Gleason score you can typically see better. Um, you know, you can look at the slide and look at the, if it's more or less than five millimeters, there's a distinction. And certainly higher Gleason scores typically, not always, um, but typically are more apparent on, on MRI. This just shows more numbers uh, to be associated with that. But if you're looking at the target lesion, which typically is defined as the biggest lesion, um, that's not necessarily the, necessarily the most biologically important lesion. Um, but from a size standpoint, um, MRI does OK. Um, it's not perfect. We know the limitations, but it does well. Um, this study is just one of many that we've done at Memorial. Um, so while we aren't often thought of as a center that does uh, sort of minimally invasive things, um, we've actually had a fairly robust program in focal therapy uh, for many years. So this study, uh, it was um, a combination of uh, investigator initiated and new technology. Um, it was using MRI guidance, very similar to what Dr. Klotz presented with his intraurethral um, ablation strategies. This is true um, HIFU. Um, basically, MRI targeted. Um, you can read the parameters. It was multi-center. Um, there were eight sites that uh, had patients. Um, it focused not on low-risk patients, but on intermediate risk, and it included both 3 plus 4 and 4 plus 3. Uh, lesions, most ended up being Gleason grade group 2. Uh, there was real-time monitoring with a the thermometry uh, that is one of the benefits of doing this MRI that does provide, unfortunately, some logistical hoops. Um, and then patients were monitored with PSA and exams every uh, three months. Basically, all were planned and, and are planned to have biopsies. The six-month biopsies have been done. Not everyone has reached the 24-month uh, mark. And as I mentioned, this was an initial trial looking at quality of life, although we do have some oncologic outcomes. Um, again, the primary endpoint um, is looking at uh, safety. Uh, it's a new technology, so we have to go through uh, uh, those uh, hoops and um, basically also looking at quality of life changes and some oncologic outcomes based on uh, planned uh, biopsies. So there were uh, about 101 patients, so 100 patients in the trial. Fairly um, typical of patients we see today. Um, average age was about 63. The vast majority, just based on the population, was Caucasian. Most, over 80%, were clinical T1C. Um, and about 80% were uh, Gleason grade group 2. Uh, the remaining 20% were uh, Gleason grade group 3. 
as you can see, and as Dr. Klotz pointed out um, during his presentation, the actual sonication time, which is the time you're using to destroy tissue, is relatively short. It takes about 15 minutes. The big time sink is getting people in and out of the MRI and positioning them and get everything set up. Um, that did come down, that time frame did come down uh, with experience, but it takes a couple of hours. Um, it's a long time to hold up an MRI, so if this is going to be a strategy, you're likely going to have to treat a lot of patients and have a dedicated MRI um, for that. Um, but uh, it is what it is in terms of uh, um, the program. Typical side effects, most folks did very well. There were, uh, um, you know, a smattering of those with hematuria that can last for a few months after the treatment. Uh, there was one urethral stricture. A few patients went into urinary retention. So typical things you see with less than whole gland ablation um, with HIFU. So from uh, the standpoint of is it safe, um, the hurdle was low and, and we met that low hurdle. Um, from the standpoint of biopsies, at least if you look at the area that was targeted, most men have a negative biopsy. About 90% of patients, when you re-biopsy them, the area that you ablate is negative. Um, the problem is, of course, is what do you ablate? But uh, um, most of those, the nine men that did have recurrence, about half of those were just Gleason score six cancers. Um, the other half did have either Gleason grade group two or Gleason grade group three. Um, but overall, about 90% of patients had negative biopsies um, within the target. Um, and then from the standpoint of looking at other parts of the gland, that's where this technology fails. And it's not that the HIFU doesn't work, it's this we have not appropriately targeted um, the lesions or the areas which contain more significant cancers. So this was very similar to Dr. Klotz's results from the intraurethral um, uh, ablation. Basically about 80% of the men um, don't have any grade group two or grade group three cancer. And the vast majority of these, of course, were on the side or in an area that was not treated. So this really isn't failure of HIFU. This is failure of appropriately identifying all of the significant lesions, even though each of these men had undergone two separate biopsy sessions. So again, suggesting that systematic biopsies and MRI are certainly not the holy grail uh, in uh, identifying all of the areas of uh, potential significant cancer. Um, a few folks have undergone their 24-month biopsies, uh, less than half the patients. Um, most of them are doing fine. There's very few cancers that were seen in these areas. Very immature, um, but I had the slide, so I'm showing it. Um, if you look at uh, PSA levels, as I mentioned, the group as a whole had a PSA starting at about 6-ish, uh, 5.8 to be exact, and it about halves. Um, and, and that's fairly durable, at least for the first 12 months. Usually you reach the nadir at, at uh, uh, six months, and then at least at 12 months it stays fairly similar. There's a wide range of PSAs, but in general there's a decline um, at the six-month mark, which is uh, held up at the 12-month uh, mark. If you look at the uh, IIEF scores now, these are much high. You, you look at this and you say, wow, there's about a 70 percent uh, chance of erectile function, or if you flip it around, about a third of the men experienced erectile dysfunction with focal ablation. This is IIEFs of 24 and 26, though. If you look at most surgical series, they sometimes go down as low as an IIEF of 18. Um, some of them that are a little bit uh, more honest will use 21. So these are pretty stringent bars in terms of erectile function. But again, even with focal ablation, uh, these men do experience some decline in erectile function, which is why we have not advocated using um, even focal therapy for limited lesions in those men who would otherwise be candidates for active surveillance. Um, we do not... Um, treat active surveillance, or we do not treat low-risk patients um, with any kind of therapy. We manage those men with active surveillance because if you do anything, even if it's a relatively limited ablation, there is a decline in erectile function. Um, 
Again, a smattering of points. There's a lot of range in this. But in general, um, urinary function was fine. Most men didn't have many issues. There was the one urethral stricture that I mentioned and a few men that did experience urinary retention. But overall, at least uh, um, from start to finish, there weren't many changes in overall voiding function, uh, either from pre to post treatment. So in summary, what we can say is that we're still waiting for the 24-month data, but in the short term, meaning within 6 to 12 months, this is a safe procedure. Uh, patients tolerate it well. The side effects are relatively manageable. Um, there are really no long-term issues. And uh, the urinary and sexual functions, while there is a decline in, in sexual function, erectile function, urinary function um, certainly um, is uh, maintained in these patients. And for selected patients who are interested in a non-whole gland therapy, this certainly represents um, a reasonable uh, treatment strategy. And what we're moving forward with is um, we're trying to find an appropriate endpoint uh, appropriate means the FDA will accept it, and this has been going on for many, many years. A lot of folks in the audience have been involved with this. And what they've actually allowed is delay in progression to whole gland treatment as a meaningful endpoint. So rather than having to wait for survival or metastasis or something like that, the goal is that if we have a patient, we can simply kick their can down the road, hopefully forever, um, in terms of never having to have a whole gland treatment. Uh, but those, that will be um, the end point for the uh, um, phase three trials that will be planned for any of the focal therapy strategies. It's to try to prevent uh, or delay um, whole gland treatment.